Hey Geek Family, we're back. This time we're going to check out part two to the BBC's The Forgotten Volunteers, India Army during World War II. And I'm Nathan. Trinity. Troy. And Jordan. Yeah, That's we done. decided to mix it up a little bit with the seating arrangements here. Uh, Rachel's still not with us. She's uh, back hitting her books, doing her studies, which give her lots of encouragement. So you got this, you got this. Our test is coming up soon, so uh, she's not with us today. But real quick before I check this video, I just want to say thank you guys again for all your support of the channel. And if you can, can you guys hit that like and the subscribe button, followed by the notification bell. Bang! All right. We did. We actually got more than one person in the comment section said, yes, please check out um, the rest of the series. So, hey, we're going to go ahead and record it. Like we said, I was going to watch it anyway, but since you guys would like us to put it up here, we're going to go ahead and do that. And, uh, yeah, I'll shut up and let's check this out. In September 1940, Graziani invaded Egypt, but didn't get far. Outnumbered five to one. A largely Indian force of 20,000 men under the command of General Wavell defeated the Italians, bringing the British public news of the first land victories of the war. We were providing them with a bit of a boost because of the victory, and that was sadly needed at that time following Dunkirk. It's not bad, you know, when you, when you think that the Indians were fighting uh, on a foreign soil for the Empire's cause, not their own country's cause at mm. all, uh, their performance was very good indeed, wasn't it? Their loyalty was very good indeed. After routing the Italians in Egypt, Wavell's army went on to crush enemy armies in Ethiopia and Eritrea. In May 1941, the Duke of Aosta surrendered. By November, some 290,000 Italians and their colonial troops were prisoners of war. Yeah. Dismayed at the Italian defeats, Hitler sent General Rommel with the Africa Corps to strengthen Italian morale. वो एकदम सच्चे पोजी थे। जो कुछ वो ऐलान करते थे, उस पर हमेशा सही टाइम पर हमला करते थे। और उनका हमला ऐसा जबरदस्त होता था क्या हवाई जहाज क्या टैंक, बटाबट चारों तरफ से घेरा। थी के हाथ के ऊपर हाथ मार के दौड़ जाओ कभी वो सौ मील आगे आ गए कभी हम सौ मील पीछे आ गए क्योंकि वो रुकावट बहुत कम थी इलाका बिल्कुल साफ था जंगल वगैरह नहीं था तो जब सोलम से तुबरुक से भागे तो सोलम में आके ठहरेंगे सोलम से उनको भगा दिया तो वो तुबरुक से पीछे वो नहीं ठहरेंगे इसलिए आगे पीछे ऐसे चलता था Indian forces, one regiment, two or three, 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 six regiment, three times in Solom was finished. Three times, absolutely. They had to go up, the Germans were up. They were like this, that the regiment of the regiment was finished. Then they didn't raise it, then they went up three times, the regiment was finished. By the end of 1941, India had sent a quarter of a million men to the Middle East. They were under the command of Indian Army General Lord Auchinleck. General Auchinleck के लिए वैसे naturally हर इंदुस्तानी सिपाही का उसके साथ प्यार था क्योंकि वो पुराना अफसर था नॉर्थ वेस्ट फ्रंटियर में लड़ा पश्तो जानता था पंजाबी जानता था गोरखा ज़बान जानता था और वो फर्स्ट पंजाब का कर्नल रहा लेकिन उसके अपनी रेजिमेंट और अपने जवानों से ज़्यादा प्यार था और उस लोगों के दिल में बहुत इज्जत अपने उसकी ज़बान में बात उसकी जवानों की नबज़ जो थी ना उसके हाथ में थी। When in 1942 Rommel took the offensive, Auchinleck withdrew behind the El Alamein line, 
where he successfully checked Rommel's advance. On that 40 miles front, General Ogilvy took personal command. The line held. After several days of attack and counterattack, the British were still there, fighting as dogged as our infantry at Waterloo. The immediate crisis was past, but anxiety remained. But Churchill saw the withdrawal as a failure. He dismissed Auchinleck and replaced him with Montgomery, a general who did not endear himself to the Indian Army. Oh, Lord, Montgomery. When he came and issued some stupid edicts, they will be, there will be no more withdrawal. Uh, it was absolutely ridiculous for a man to say that. We couldn't go back any farther and we didn't intend going back any farther. We had a fortified or a fairly good defensive position there, and there we intended to stay. He also issued an edict saying that uh, headquarters and staff officers should take physical exercise in the morning. Silly man, we'd been running up and down the desert for a couple of years. And it wasn't exercise we wanted. It was uh, more resources. But Montgomery had Churchill's backing mm. and shared his disparaging view of Indian troops. He used to make statements when he remarked all these things against Indians. He, he, I mean, uh, how dare a commander say the Indian troops say he doesn't want Indian troops in this battle here? Unless he had a backing of somebody. Montgomery was given the resources he required to win the Second Battle of Alamein, including an Indian division. Apartment. The whole place lit up. Nobody had seen at that time, heard. Tremendous bombardment at that time. But Montgomery, he made it certain that all the equipment available to him before he moved further. Whereas Weevil and Ockenleb were told to do with whatever they had, they had with them and get along, get on with it. The Indian army may have been poorly equipped in North Africa, but in the jungles of Malaya and Burma, it was totally unprepared. When the Japanese invasion came in December 1941, of the force defending Britain's possessions in Singapore and Malaya, two-thirds were Indian, not British. We never believed that we would be defeated. We had full faith in the victory of a British government. And we did not mind retreating because it is a temporary, we considered it a temporary setback and we were confident to win the war. The Japanese Hawaii Jaws Asman ki Balandi par parvaz kar rahe the. To humare ek afsar se humne puchha deck par ki ye kya tu kahan lagaye humare American dost hain wo madad ke liye aa rahe hain. Haqeeqat mein wo Japanese the hume dark mein rakha jata tha. The speed of the Japanese advance trapped hundreds of Indian troops behind enemy lines. Some were put before firing squads. One by one, but Hakar, Pichi, Rasi, Sahad, Bande, or Panja admit him. I'm as a Kareti Bill could firing squad. Can you? The fire was in Mujaye Patak, Megirigan. Mujor Pui Patani. जो सिख साहब थे उनको मैंने हिलाया दो तीन बार रात को तीन बजे तो उसका खून मेरी वर्दी पर मुझ पर मैं लेटा हुआ था सारा खून मेरे पर था तो मैंने देखा कि मैं भी मर गया हूं लेकिन मेरे मैं कहता हूं मरा नहीं उनको हिलाया कोई आवाज नहीं सब मर गए थे फिर मैंने अपने आप को निकाला उधर से आ गया 4 बजे टाइम 5 बजे का टाइम था मिस्टर वाज लकी 
These pictures show the Japanese using Indian prisoners for target practice. Oh, oh, my goodness. Those who survived the ordeal were bayoneted to death. On the 15th of February, 1942, General Percival surrendered the British garrison at Singapore. Of the 90,000 troops taken prisoner, 60,000 were Indians. Wow. Oh, that, oh, I wanted to hear what was going to happen right after that. Because uh, I had no idea about that. Oh, my God. That was, now, real quick before we go into the Japanese part, the, um, uh, the whole Africa section where they're up against Field Marshal Rommel, which was he was a very very good um, Field Marshal slash General. I don't know if he was a Field Marshal at that t at, right at that time, but very very good um, at that job. And he had limited resources as well. Like it, you you sit there and you think about some of the stuff in history. Like had he had more of the resources, if Germany had been able to put behind him, how the Africa campaign would have turned out. I don't know. He, he was very good, and he ended up um, towards the end of the war committing suicide. Because he was, um, I think, part of the plot to assassinate Hitler. Because um, he wasn't like your typical like Nazi. Like he didn't. He thought Hitler was, you know, out there. So, um, but they gave him the option that, uh, like, hey, you can just basically he went out in the woods and killed himself. They said you 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 just need to go kill yourself because you know, we we know you're a part of it and all that stuff. So, um, but that the whole thing too with the uh, that one general I can't o Ochelik, o Ochelik, I, that one um, who can speak bilingual. Yeah, yeah, he was speaking language. He had the respect of his troops. He respected his troops. Yeah, that's a good leader because that's one where your your troops are gonna fight for you, fight for each other, yeah. and you you get everybody together and all that. And the fact that Churchill was like, no, you're not getting enough. You're re retraining too much. And then they bring in Montgomery, which. I personally don't think he was all that good of a general. Um, and then, since Churchill liked him, he gives him a ton more resources and everything, and is able to attack and everything. Um, and the fact that he—I didn't know he—he—I he, um, just wasn't a big fan of him as a general, but I didn't know he had the same disdain for the Indian people like Churchill had. I had no idea about that. But, um, but real quick to get to the Japanese part, to me. Fighting the Japanese during World War II would have been a horrendous thing because they, to me, they were a a harder foe to fight. Not so much that they didn't they they had more military and everything to go against the, um, the Allies because Germany did, but I think they were more ruthless and yeah. they were a lot more um, not so much. I guess you could say kind of brainwashed. Like they they all had this mentality of like if you surrender you're less than human like they disdain people who, who surround that's why they treated their prisoners of war so horribly because they didn't consider them honorable or anything with stuff like that and the whole thing with them using the indian soldiers as, as target practice and then the ones who live they bayoneted them to death like that stuff happened all the time they thought so little of prisoners of war um I, they would have been a, hor a horrendous enemy to fight um but that was very good it, i wanted to keep watching it you guys yeah oh, really good. It left you on a cliffhanger. Yeah, it definitely did. I kind of want to just jump right into part three, but we won't right now. We'll save that for maybe next week. Yeah, like you said that, um, I can't remember his name, the bilingual. Yeah, yeah, the one who, yeah. Man, he was, yeah, that's like a really good leader that, like, they give you motivation, and I, I imagine that they wanted to win that just that much more because of their, yeah, he was able general. To bring them, his, I think he was a colonel. Colonel, just yeah. to make him proud, and he seemed like, you know, he really did care about them. Um, yeah, to see a British them. officer showing respect to them yeah. is like, you know, that's and that's how it should. That's how it should be, but mm -hmm. unfortunately, it wasn't. And then uh, the Japanese part just stuck out to me too much. That was just terrible. The, no, that was awful. There's like there's so many pictures and stuff like that, videos of some of the horrendous stuff that they did. And I think at the end of the war, they got off. Like to me, the they got off a lot lighter than they should have during war crimes and everything because they were just as horrendous as the Nazis were during World War Two, uh, a lot of their war crimes um, but yeah sorry first you guys um I thought it was really good I didn't know I didn't know that I mean I knew Japan was cruel during World War Two with like what they did to China and all that mm -hmm. but I didn't know that they would just massacre their prisoners of war just because they surrendered 
Um, I mean, yeah, they didn't all of them. Like they would use them for you know slave labor and stuff like that to, to you know do, do things. And they keep them as POWs and stuff like that. But for the most part, they weren't treated well. Now, just like ev- just like every um, th- every circumstance, there were good ones. There were one, there were some Japanese soldiers who didn't treat the POWs like that. Who you know yeah. who would be sympathetic towards and all that. But it seemed like overall, most of them just because that's how they were brought up and that's how they were raised and taught and everything and, and, and yeah. ingrained in them through their training and everything that that you are if you don't die in battle. And like their their big thing too is they will commit suicide too if they would they would rather kill themselves and be captured and so that's there's another thing that they think so much lower of people who who surrender. Yeah, because I know that um, like when they were in school they would get like this book and it would basically just they, that's when they would start brainwashing them with like when they were in school mm-hmm. to like basically um, don't surrender, be the last man standing. Yeah. If you're gonna get captured, kill yourself. And that's what they did for a lot of, of the kamikaze guys. Like they mm-hmm. uh, had them fly their planes into the ship so they wouldn't get captured. Yeah, yeah, and it was uh, it was amazing too. I'll say this too with the, with the Japanese part. The uh, the one um, veteran, Indian veteran, who survived the firing yeah. squad. Yeah, that is just sheer sure, amazing. Oh, oh, yeah, shot. I forgot about that. That's I, I don't know. Crazy. I, it didn't say if he got shot. Yeah. But I'm assuming he did because he said he fell when he's started here or maybe feel like out of shock or like it's probably one of those things where yeah you're because you're probably all pretty close and it's just out of a reflex you're like just expecting it and then your momentum just carries you back and your friends fall on top of you and their blood yeah you you get knocked out that's terrible um I, i can't even imagine jordan overall i really enjoyed it once again learned a lot of information mm-hmm. And uh, I did like the scene of the dive bombing. I think that's just a very interesting like tactic of war because it was used so much and it was so effective yeah. at the same time. Mm-hmm. But overall, I really enjoyed it. Can't wait to see part three. Yeah, me you either. Know, it's very leave down in the comments. Definitely. Um, oh yeah, yeah. I guess you could you can say you know hit us in the comments if you like us to check out part three. But I think since with the first part, we're just gonna make that an over. Over all of them. Maybe they don't want us to, Nathan. I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. Let us know in the comment section if you guys would like us to check out part three. I assume you guys would. Did you like want us to check out part two? Um, but yeah, definitely cannot wait to check that out. World War Two is just is just the time and an era. I, I wholeheartedly agree with the the saying that that was the greatest generation of people who were able to stand up and fight against the a- the Axis powers. You know, the Germany, Italy, uh, Japan during all that and what they went through to to where we're able to have what we have today it's just amazing and and to, to learn more about the indians involvement in it which did, i didn't really know too much about so i'm absolutely loving this series um definitely looking forward to checking out the rest of it but let us know what you guys thought down in the comment section or on twitter or instagram just once again thank you guys so much for all your love and support on the channel you guys are awesome love y'all